All of us will have lives as male and female, gay and straight. You, you experience all these different points of view. I, another past life as a woman. And we went out to a club and there were all these guys hitting on us and they're all drunk. Oh, just leave us alone. We just want to have a quick drink. And that was like the soul's lesson to learn in that life, that experience of how it is to be rejected like that. And the reason they rejected was because they were gay. Love Cover Life Academy launched this month with a mini course on how to deeply connect with your true self. To gain access to the powerful guided meditation, the group spiritual practice video, the exclusive community chat, and the monthly live Q&A, click here or the description box to join the community. Today I'm here with Simon Baum, who is the host of our Paranormal Afterlife podcast used to be the past lives podcast i'm really looking forward to diving in and learning more of your story so thank you for joining me simon yeah it's really nice to be here thanks of course so i would love to start by hearing a little bit of your journey i know you have some past life memories yourself and i would love to learn what was your life like? When did these memories start coming to you or did you always have them? What did that journey look like for you? Well, it was a thing of going to the College of Psychic Studies in London. And I wasn't a student there, but you could pay a little bit of money and then the students could practice on you. So they were getting trained to be mediums and psychics and channelers and they did past life regression. And you could pay a lot more money and sit with one of the teachers. And so I used to go there every couple of weeks for like a long time just because it was a, an investigation for me. It wasn't that I was trying to contact somebody who died or, or something like that. I was just fascinated by it as, as much as I am now. And so that was the late 1980s. It was decades ago. But I, I booked a past life regression. And so that's how I've recovered memories of past lives and I've done so many past life regressions now and it's it's just uh, amazing how it can come up and how powerful it can be and emotional and so I started doing past life regressions but yeah the late 1980s and the, the the thing was I went into this past life where I saw myself as a six-year-old girl and it was 1895 and my name was Elizabeth. And it was weird because you go into the memories and you just know this stuff, as well as getting these images in your mind's eye. And my parents were there and my little brother was in a pram and the father was there and I could see him in this three-piece suit and a moustache. And I just knew that he's incarnated with me in this life. And now he's my best friend in this life. And so that life moved forward. And it jumped to a point where I saw myself as a nurse in the First World War. And I was a, a very close to the front line. And we were in these huge kind of tents with all these hospital beds in. And the guys were coming from the, straight from battle, really, with these terrible injuries. And so we were just working as hard as we could. Didn't have anywhere near enough beds for the men that were coming in. So I, I remember that so clearly. And I also went to a part of North London two years later, a place I'd never been to in London. And there was this park that I'd seen in the past life regression. It was exactly that place. And there's no way I could have known what this park looked like. And it was very distinct because it was on a very steep slope. And it's almost that kind of thing, you know, if town developers are building a park, the last place they're going to put it on a slope like that. That's why it was so distinctive. And also the buildings in that area looked exactly the same as from the past life regression. And I did some Googling and I found, I looked up nurses' uniforms, First World War, and they were exactly as I'd seen it in the past life regression. So it, it was uh, exciting as well to find all this stuff and these little verifications and it kind of spurs you on and it, it's another little step on your, on your spiritual path when you're, you're learning all this stuff. And 
uh, I did return to that past life a few years later, and I found myself no longer a nurse, but living in London and married. And there was this scene I saw myself and on just on the on the sidewalk on the pavement, and there's a car here, and I'm with the husband, and there's something really important's happening, and I'm so, kind of saying I I can help with this. But he was very condescending and I was getting quite angry and I could really feel it in the session lying, you know, I was getting angry and I was, it was this thing that, you know, I would never have experienced, but a man talking down to a woman and I was the woman, I was the one that's being patronized and I was feeling, I was, you, you don't know what I'm capable of. You don't know what I did in the war for those years when we had to look after all these men and the long hours we worked. And so that was really insightful for me to have that perspective, which, you know, I, I would never have had otherwise. Wow, that's incredible. So you said when you went into this memory, you had the visual details that you could see happening, but you also just knew things like your name and the time, like the year that it was taking place. Yeah, it's it's amazing what can come through and I take people through past life regressions and I can ask them questions. Well, that's one of the things I'll do if they find themselves in a past life scene with people that are close to them in that past life, I'll say, do you recognize any of them from this life? And often people will recognize them and mm -hmm. suddenly say, oh yeah, that person who was my brother in that life is now my father in this life. And it, it's that thing where there, there's a soul group that we all work together and it's, it's almost like a, you know, there's a life plan and I kind of see it as like putting on a play in a way is that you all get together before you're born and you decide who's going to play which role and who, which lessons you need to learn and how the life's going to turn out and what you're going to do at this point and what I'm going to do at that point. And you help each other with what you're trying to do in life. And so it, it can be really powerful. And I also have done sessions with people who don't have visuals. You know, there are some people that don't imagine pictures. They just never do it. And I did a session with a woman and we started off and she said, I'm in a, in a farmyard and I'm about 13 and there's all these other children about my age and the stables are over there. And I was thinking, oh, she's getting really good visuals. And afterwards, she just told me, no, it was just knowledge that was coming to me. I, I didn't get any visuals at all of all this stuff. Wow, that's fascinating. So this is a question I've had for a while because I've had hypnotherapy sessions done previously, not for a past life regression, but to take me back to something that happened in this life, like a spiritual experience that I had. And when I had those sessions, I did not honestly have the sense that I was getting any information or that I was revisiting the experience. It was more the sense that I wanted to experience something, but I couldn't honestly say that it was. It felt like it's more like my imagination trying to, you know, create something or figure out what's supposed to happen. So my question to you is when you're actually having a valid regression experience, is there any sense that your imagination could be creating it or any question that your imagination could be creating it? Or is it really clear to the experiencer that this is happening to me? Like this is a real experience that I'm remembering and, and it's actually happening to me. Yeah, it can be very emotional and there can be slight physical feelings sometimes. And there's that, that thing where you may have knowledge and that is a thing that I brief people on before we start a session. When we, we, we just start the Zoom call, it's one of the things I say is that it can feel like you're just making it up because you get all this visuals in your imagination. And, you know, it's fair enough. That's what we do with our imagination. We make stuff up. But as the session goes on, it becomes more and more obvious you're not making it up because the lives that we see can be so unpredictable and unexpected. But in the same way, they're make perfect sense in how they relate to your current life. And also in clinical hypnotherapy, taking people back to traumas in their current life can be very healing if it's done the right way. 
but you know when, when you like you say it's it's in your imagination so you you can feel like you're making it up and the, the bit the advice is to just go with it and let it all come and not try to analyze it or discard it or say oh no this is nonsense and but to perhaps do that afterwards but also you know, if the session's recorded, you can sit back and listen to it and analyze it then, and that will free you up to not try and analyze it while it's happening. Because bringing in your logical mind, your conscious analysis can put blocks up, and it's not helpful. Yeah, thank you for explaining that. Do you have any other past life memories of your own? Yeah, I've, there's all sorts of things. I had a past life memory as a woman in Germany hundreds of years ago, and I was burnt for being a witch. And I had a, a memory, a brief one, where I was standing on a battlefield, and I think it was the Second World War, and I had this bag over my shoulder with a red cross on it, and all this fighting was going on around me, and I was kind of stuck. It was like so overwhelming. I was so stunned and scared by what was going on, I couldn't move and I was just standing there. And there was a past life where I was working in a pub in England hundreds of years ago. I remember that was very dull and I, I got the, the impression that was a wasted life because I just didn't do anything with it. But there's, there's other things that can happen in past life regressions that can be really unexpected. I've done sessions with people and I've had one happened to me where it was like the spirit guides hijacked the session and i was I saw myself it was like the 1950s and i was a young man and i was wearing this new suit and i just had my hair cut and i was thinking i look fantastic check me out look how great i am and i was going into this pub in london and then suddenly i just shot up through the roof and i was going up like a rocket and looking down on the earth and i ended up in orbit and I was looking round, and there was this kind of big hole in space, this black hole. And I went over to the edge of it and looked into it, and I felt quite scared. And then suddenly I was back in the room with the hypnotherapist, and they were, you know, they, they hadn't brought me out of it. They hadn't no control over it. And then I had this, this weird vision. I don't know how to describe it. It's that there was a, a face right here. And it was like their cheek was touching my cheek and they were looking down, a huge smile. And to my right, there was a wall about three feet away, but I could see people 20 feet away on that. And there was really bright light behind them. So it was just silhouetted and this tremendous feeling of happiness. And this message came through to me saying, we're so happy you did this today. We're so happy you came and did this session. And so that was, it seemed like it was my spirit guide that was this face here had hijacked me and pulled me out of the session. And there was a point where I was doing some past life regression training and the, we were practicing on each other. So we'd, I was being taken through past life regressions often. And we got to one and we started the session and the point where I should have entered a past life, I just went into this space of darkness. And it didn't feel like a bad place to be. It was just no light. And then my spirit guide appeared and kind of said to me, what are you doing? You don't need to see any past lives right now. You're doing fine. We, we got nothing to show you. And I've always found the spirit guides have a great sense of humor as well. And I've seen my spirit guide dancing around doing the Macarena and walking like an Egyptian. And I've taken people through past life regressions where they've met their spirit guides and Sometimes they'll say, oh, this, this guy's got a great sense of humor or this, this girl has. And it, it, it's, it's the amazing thing with past life regression that you, you don't just see past lives. You can go to these other places as well and meet with your spirit guides and your soul group and these kind of things. Wow. Oh, okay. That was going to be my next question for you. Have you had any between life experiences where you've seen like the grander plan of what your soul is doing in these incarnations? I wouldn't say the grander plan. I, I did what they call a life between lives regression. And that was the one where I saw myself as this woman that was burnt as a witch. That's how they take you into the life between lives. You see the death of the past life. And then I went into this space where I met with my spirit guide and they were 
kind of dressed like a, not a clown, like a harlequin. And that's when they were dancing and in the background was my soul group. And it was looked like a, a 1970s disco and they were all dancing. And there was one of those floors with all the lights and they were saying, yeah, it's, we're really glad you've come to this. And the spirit guide was uh, kind of saying, okay, we're going to go on now. We're going to meet with your council of elders. And I went and this, my spirit guide went and another soul came with us. And I realized that was my wife and that she was a really close soul with me that works with me through so many lives. And we went to where my, this is funny. There, I thought this was funny. Other people have found this to be quite serious, but I got to this, this people where they call the council of elders. I don't know if you've covered that yeah. kind of thing. <laughs> yes. And we were well, the three of us stood there in front of them. And one of them stood up and just pointed to the side, like, and just was get out. What do you think you're doing here? Kind of saying, how dare you present yourself to us and just threw me out of, of that area. And we went on to the, what you might call the Akashic Records or the, the Hall of Knowledge, you know, it has all these sorts of names. And then we went on to the stage where you choose your body for your next life. And for me, I think everybody, when they go through these sessions, they'll see something different, a completely different way it works. But for me, it was like I was in a department store and there were all these bodies on display and I had to walk along and pick one that I was going to live in for my next life. So I've done that life between lives session and I did eventually return to the council of elders in another session and we had a good conversation and we asked them, why was I thrown out last time? And they said, well, the guy that threw you out was new and he was an apprentice on the council and he oh. didn't know what he was doing. So yeah, it was, it was very interesting that, that other session. That's so interesting. That makes it sound almost similar to Earth. Like the guy was new and apprenticing and didn't know what he was doing. So even on the other side, we're still learning. Yeah, yeah, that is a thing. And it, it, it's something I hear often that, you know, you might think, oh, I've got so much trouble and so much work in this life. But if I die and there's an afterlife, at least I can relax then. At least I don't have to do a nine to five, five days a week and worry about paying the bills. But then they, they have schools on the other side. But I suppose over there, you've got infinite energy. You don't get tired and, and you're fascinated by what you're doing. I was talking to a medium the other day, recording an episode, my podcast, and she was saying sometimes people come to her and they might be hoping for connection with, with somebody who's died. And the message comes back that says, oh, they're busy right now. They can't come and see you. It's because they're at school or, or they're uh, in the healing place. And, you know, these, these kinds of things come up. So I think the, our souls seem to be so much yearning for knowledge and learning and experience. And that's why one of the reasons we come to this school on earth, which is apparently a very tough school. Right. That's fascinating. Sounds a lot like different books I've read, like Martin, or not Martin, Michael Newton's books describe something similar. I'm sure you're familiar with that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I've interviewed three or four people who were trained at the Newton Institute and mm -hmm. discussed how, how it all works. And, you know, because it, it, it's quite different to doing a past life regression because those sessions can last three or four hours. But when I do okay. a past life regression, it's one hour. And you have to do all sorts of different uh, processes to go through it. And uh, it can be very insightful. I, th I find with past life regression that there can be amazing healing that comes from it. And I'm, I'm not sure how much healing comes from a life between lives session. Fascinating. Okay, well, I would love to ask you some questions about your experiences as a past life regressionist. And the first one that comes to mind to me, because I just lost my cat last week, very suddenly, which was hard for me because my cat was very much my emotional support animal. And I just had a really special bond with him. So now I'm suddenly very interested in the topic of what our pets are doing in the afterlife. And if they're still connected with us, have you received any information about that? 
Yeah, there was, there was a session. A woman had come to me for a specific kind of what you call a therapeutic target. There, were, there was this thing that she really wanted to work on. And we went to these past lives and there was a dog in this past life. And then we saw another one. There's a dog there. But that's not what we're interested in. We're saying, well, okay, let's find this healing for this thing. And we just didn't find it. And towards the end of the session, we met with the spirit guide. And I asked the spirit guide, why did you show us these past lives today? And the spirit guide was kind of like, it's about the dog. She's saying, you've, you've got a pet dog with you right now in, in your current life, and you're not really paying any attention to it. And that's the same dog that you've seen in these past lives today. This is your, a companion that, that incarnates with you in, over your lives. And they're with you in this life. And the, the lady was saying, oh my God, it's so true. My, I'd leave it to my husband's and my son's to play with the dog. I'm, I'm doing other stuff. I don't pay much attention. And so that, that was a real insightful thing for her to be shown and to realize how important her pet was and how the, it's not just humans that incarnate together across many lives, the pets do as well, and they're companions and they work with you. So th that was, it was, yeah, it was just showing how important they are. Wow, thank you so much for sharing that. So does a pet always incarnate as a pet or can you go back and forth between being human and animal? Yeah, that's, that's the thing. I've, I've talked to people on the podcast, you know, I've done 300 episodes and I hear slightly different things from different people. Some will say it, it's almost like there's a hierarchy that you work through. You start off maybe being a plant and then you're a tree and then you're a mouse and then you're a cat and then you're a dog. And then the highest thing you can do is become a human. But then there's other people who, who would say, well, yeah, you can go back. You, if your soul wants to incarnate as a dog next time, then you do that. And it's just a, another way to learn stuff and to get for your soul to evolve and have experiences. So I don't know for sure. I, I just hear different things. We all have a role to play. Mm -hmm. And also there's a thing where I find sometimes, and I'm, I'm guilty of this, is that we're too focused on earth and that we have lives all over the universe and in other dimensions and other places. I'm reincarnating on earth and that's where all my lives are and that's where it all happens. But actually you can be all over the place. And I was talking to a lady who had a near-death experience and she went into this amazing garden and she's sitting on this bench and her spirit guides are either side of her and she can see all these people at the bottom of this garden. And she said, they're in all sorts of period costumes and from hundreds of years ago or more. And there's people from the future, there's beings there from other dimensions. And then she realized that they're, they're all my past lives and future lives and lives in other dimensions. And that we could incarnate as animals on other planets as, or I've had people, a small number of people go back to past lives on other planets. So th there is this more expansive viewpoint of our lives and reincarnation and what's happening with spirit and souls is, is we're not all just locked on planet earth and that we go all sorts of places. That makes so much sense. So you touched on this a little bit just now, but do you think that souls who incarnate on earth primarily incarnate on earth or do we really go all over the place to different places? Yeah, I think we go all over the place. And this is, this is a thing of opinion, I think, from what I've learned and how I've taken the knowledge and assimilated it, that these, there may be people who disagree with me on this who've got as much or more knowledge than me and experience. But it seems like there are different dimensions. And I, I've heard it said that, you know, you're Melissa or I'm Simon, but there's all these other dimensions right now where there are all these other Melissas. And the, when uh, a Melissa dies on another planet, they don't go back to the soul, like the core of your being. They'll come over and join you. And then it's all right. You all have to come back together to then go back to the final place. Somebody described to me as the octopus analogy where you're, each leg is a different life and the, the head of the octopus is your soul. 
and that the soul is experiencing all those lives in the same moment. And I, I had a um, I had a past life regression where I died in the late 1980s in that life, but I was born in the 1960s, so that life was going on at the same time as this life. And so there, there are those kind of parallel lives, and I think that we as souls are so much more than we can imagine. And it's not like it's just us. It's just me. There's one Simon. The whole 100% of my soul is in this body, in this life. And when I die, then I move on to the next one. It's, it's much more complicated than that. And I recently interviewed somebody who was investigating coma. And he wasn't spiritual at all. He wasn't looking for that. He just wanted to find about the experience of what's it like to go into a coma and come out of it and whether it's induced or it happens naturally. But he was interviewing all these people and they just kept on coming up with all this stuff about how they left their body and they moved around the hospital or how they had a near-death experience and they went to this whole spiritual space. And he started coming across people who said, I lived another life. I was in a coma for seven days, but in those seven days, I lived 20 years of a life on another earth. And this guy was saying he fought, he did a tour of duty in a war in a Southeast Asian country that doesn't exist on this planet. And he, and he came out of it and the doctor said, oh, it's just hallucinations, you're delusional, it's all the drugs. And he was, he's like, no, absolutely not. You know, I had a job, I worked nine to five, I got married. I, I went home at night, I went to the movies, I went out and had a beer sometimes, and it was 20 years. And then there was another woman who said she lived seven years of another life. And her thing was that she had a child and that child grew up to be five years old. She had the child for five years. She came out of the coma and she's like, where's, where's my child? And she had to grieve the loss of the child. And so that, you know, this is what fascinates me about all these things that they were living another life on another earth. And where's that coming from? These people are so sure that that life was just as real as this one. And it's not a hallucination. It's not a delusion. So, you know, you, you just keep going. It gets more complicated. Wow. That really boggles your mind to think about she lived for seven years with a child. And then she woke up in this world and was that like a real lifetime that was still continuing with that child and she just wasn't part of it anymore? I don't, I'm not expecting you to have an answer to that. It's just I know, but crazy she, to think about. But she said a year after the coma, she gave birth and she recognized that child in the baby. Wow. Yeah, so... It, it's, it's, it's a thing where I, I hear stuff like this and I'm not almost like a real true believer and I accept it all as the absolute truth, but then I'm not a skeptic and I just discount it. I hear it and I find it fascinating and I, I'm quite excited to hear it, but I don't I think, oh, what's going on there? I, don't, I need to do more investigation. Right. So you mentioned that you had a past life in the 1980s, I believe. Yeah. Are you able to share about that one? Yeah, that, that was interesting. I, 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 another past life as a woman, not all my past lives are female, but I started off where I saw myself in the dressing room of a theater in London and I was a dancer. And this, this was one of the big West End shows that I was dancing in. And there was another woman there and she was just handing me a dress. And we went out to a club and we'd finished our work and we were very sober. And there were all these guys hitting on us and they're all drunk. And we're like, oh, just leave us alone. We just want to have a quick drink and go home. We're tired. And I worked out that they were in a relationship, these two women. And it got to a point where one of them was going away to back to the countryside to see their family and they'd be gone for three or four days. But then a letter came and said, I, I'm not coming back. I'm going to get married and have this life with this man. And so there was a theme in that life that was kind of, re it was rejection. And that was like the soul's lesson to learn in that life, that experience of how it is to be rejected like that. And I saw that woman, that, that past life that I had becoming a, 
a kind of mother figure or a matriarch. And she had a big Victorian house. And there would be all these young ladies that had been rejected by their families. They were homeless. And the reason they were rejected was because they were gay. And that she had all these rooms and she said, you can stay here while you get, get yourself back together and you get a job and you can then move on to your own home. And so it seemed like it was 1987, 1988 when she died. So that, that was an interesting life because what it kind of showed me was because I had another life where I was rejected in a completely different way to that. And then there was another life again where I was rejected, which in a completely different way. And it kind of showed that if your soul's coming to earth to learn a lesson, say, oh, okay, I want to learn about rejection. You don't just do it in one life. You might do 20 or 30 lives. And in each one, you're rejected in a completely different way to the last one. So it's that thing again, it's getting comp more complicated and, you know, unexpected that, that it would work like that. Wow. Okay. So I have a couple of questions there, but the first one is, did you say that you were alive in the 1960s and then, so that would have actually been a future life if, if we can even really put a time on it, but in earth time, it would have been a future life, right? Yeah. I mean, from, I was born in 1965 and that, so I was living at the same time that woman was living. That's crazy. But there, there was a session where somebody was born in 1958 and we went back to a past life and they talk about how they died when they were 90. And they, then we, we saw the death and we thought, hang on, if they were born in 58, they're dying in 2048. So we're seeing something that's happening in the future. And that person, it's not a past life, it's another life. They're living right now and we've somehow tapped into it. And there's also this idea that, you know, there's no time in the afterlife. Everything's in the same moment. And so as we can get healing in this life by viewing past lives, it may be that the people in the past can be healed by stuff that we do in this life and that the healing's going backwards in time. So that's a fun thought, another one. Wow. Yeah. So what you're saying is that for anybody listening, there could be another version of them out there somewhere living right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it could also be, I talked to a guy, his son died and he, he was a complete atheist that didn't have any interest in this stuff. And after his son died, he started getting signs from him and he started getting a connection and he was seeing mediums. And eventually he found out his son had reincarnated and was now a small girl living in another part of the USA. But at the same time, he could still communicate with his son in the afterlife. So that's, that's another weird thing to think about. Wow, that's crazy. I can only imagine myself in that situation if that had happened to me. And then I found out that my child had reincarnated somewhere. It would be so hard to not want to go find them. But obviously, you couldn't do that in this world. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if you really could find them. Could you, I suppose there are times children have past life memories and maybe they would track you down if the child gave enough information. Right. Okay. So going back to when you were talking about the theme of your life being rejection of that past life and a couple of others, there's probably some people listening who are thinking, 20 or 30 lifetimes just to be rejected in different ways. I, I don't want anything to do with that. So first of all, why do we plan these themes for ourselves that are so difficult to go through? I think that's where you really learn. That's how the soul really evolves. And that's why they say the earth schools are really tough school. But also I've heard it described as a hot ticket that lots of souls want to incarnate here and there's just not enough bodies. And there is the soulful point of view and there's the human point of view. So like my human point of view, it feels like, man, I don't want to come back here again. But my soul's looking down thinking, oh, this is great learning experience. I'm definitely coming back here again. So the, the, it's the two perspectives there of how it all works. And also I've heard that for a soul, a life on earth that could be 70, 80 years just goes by in an instant for them. They, they don't 
you know, experience the whole time of it like we do. And then following on that, is there any way to sort of fast track the learning so that could you come in and just learn the lessons so well that you don't have to come back for so many lifetimes? Yeah, I, I think so. I think it depends on the lesson and how your soul age is. I think maybe older souls learn in a different way to younger souls, which is a weird thing to say because time doesn't exist in the afterlife. So how can a soul be older than another one? But it, it's, it's, it's a thing where the earth would be a real hot ticket because lives on other planets may be a lot easier than they are here. And so you don't learn as quickly there. So it may be that where we are now, right now is one of the fastest ways to learn. Interesting. What are some other themes that souls would come here to learn? Oh, I think you learn about everything. You learn about what it's like to be maybe abused in some way by maybe your parents or your partner, or you may come here to learn about what it's like to be disabled, what it's like to be gay. And there's so many things. And that's why all of us will have lives as male and female, as gay and straight, as any, you know, like if you're being black or you're being Asian, you, you experience all these different points of view and the way that those lives play out. And it may be that you have a life where you're very rich and then you have a life where you're very poor and you may be beautiful, you may be very ugly. And it, it's all the different combinations come together. That makes sense. And then what is the benefit to the soul in having these experiences? Well, that, they talk about the soul evolution. And when the soul has learned so much and got to a, a state where they don't need to return to earth anymore, then they can move on to the next level, whatever that is. And it may be that you start working as a spirit guide because you've had so many lives, you'd be real good at guiding somebody through lives. And then after that, you move up and you become one of the council of elders. But then there, there may be another thing where you move up a level because we talk about frequency and vibration. And so your vibrations get faster and they talk about seven levels of heaven and you move up and up and up until eventually you go back to source. You go, you join back, join back with the creator or God, whatever you want to call it, where you came from in the first place. But then I've heard you, you get sent out again after that. So you, you achieve that goal and you go back out again. And it's been, I've heard it called the grand cycle. So you start all these lives again, and it may be on other planets where you may start being just little fish, single celled organisms in the sea or something, and you work your way back up again. I've heard it described the, the exhale and the inhale. So we get flung out from the source and have all of these different experiences, and then we come back. And this cycle repeats itself over and over, which is really, really interesting. And there's even some spiritual texts, like one of my favorite channel texts is called The Law of One. And it talks about this cycle, except every time it repeats, it's at a higher level. And that's really hard to wrap your mind around. So you mentioned other planets, and you mentioned how we can have experiences on other planets. What other planets have your clients seen? I had a client who went to a, a world that seemed to be almost all water and they were some kind of, I don't know, you imagine them, they, they were a dolphin or a whale or something like that. And the, they were an assistant to a much larger, much older being. They were the same as them, but they were very young and they were, this being had tremendous psychic ability. Maybe you could call it that. And there were lots of them around the planet that had a network of energy that was positive energy that they were sending out. And their job as an assistant was more like an apprentice. And they were learning to do that. And that over how many hundred or 200 years, they would become one of the network. And the spirit guide told us that they did that life in preparation to come to earth, where they're a psychic on this earth. And they would have the same job here, which is trying to send out positive energy to the planet. And so it was all connected with that. I had a, a woman who, she was quite quiet when we entered the past life. And I said, what can you see? And she said, it's just a desert. 
And I said, well, if you look down at yourself, could you see what you're wearing? And she was quiet. And I said, well, what do you see? And she said, I've got too many knees. I think I'm an alien. And that, that's as far as we could go with that one. And then there was another client who said, as soon as we got into the past life, they were very nervous and anxious and quite scared. And she was saying, they're coming to get me. They're going to find me in this cave. And I was like, who's coming? And she was saying, they're big, kind of like furry creatures. They're not anything I've seen before on earth. And I don't think I'm a human either, but I've done something and they want to get me. And so that, that was another one that was really interesting. Wow, that's fascinating. Do you think that the other planets that are out there are as challenging as Earth is? Do you think it's common for planets to be as challenging as Earth is? I think it probably is, but it, it, it's, there's probably other planets out there, but maybe not so many as the easier planets. I get the impression mm -hmm. you will start off living lives on the easier planets and you work your way up to earth because earth's so tough. And in some way, all the other lives are your apprenticeship. And maybe when you leave earth, you go to another planet, it's even harder, which isn't a nice thought, but then your soul's probably going, oh yeah, harder planet. Great one. <laughs> right. Well, if you, I mean, I've heard that earth is one of the hardest planets, if not the hardest planet, but if you think about it, there, you could definitely imagine worse experiences. I mean, near-death experiencers have seen hellish realms. I'm sure there's people who go there specifically to try to help. Yeah. Yeah. And I hear that sometimes people will do a past life regression and we ask the spirit guide about the lessons they're learning. And the spirit guide might say, well, you didn't have to come back, but you've come back to earth to help this time. Mm. And that you, you could have uh, not incarnated at all because you learned all your lessons. So in a way, it almost seems to me like you could mess something up. You come back and you, you've got your karma perfectly balanced. And then you come back and live a life and you mess up your karma. And it's like, oh man, I was free of all this stuff. Now I've got to live a few more lives to rebalance everything. Mm. All right, well, just a couple more questions. Um, what can a person do to not mess up their life and not mess up their karma? I don't know, really. I, I do think doing a past life regression can be helpful because you can get into that space and ask your spirit guide what you're doing, what it's all about. But it's so hard to know, isn't it? Going day to day, living your life and, you know, what karma is and how it works. And it's, I think it's all about balance. It's not about judgment or retribution or if you do something bad, then it will come back to you and you'll be punished for it. It's just uh, two sides of a coin, left and right and what have you. So I don't know. I, don't, I really don't know. It's a great question. I appreciate your honesty. And I would love to ask you, what's the most interesting past life regression that you've done? There's so many. It's because there's, there's unexpected healing crops up and there, there was a woman I took her into past life regression and it's another one of these ones where we were looking for something and she got another type of healing it's almost like the spirit guides hijacked the session and we're oh no 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 we know what's best for you we're not doing what you want we're doing what we want and she was in this forest and she stepped in a bear trap and those big metal claws grabbed her leg in that past life and in this life, she's in her 50s and she's got eczema on her leg. She's had it for so long. She tried everything to get rid of it. And it was in the exact same place those bear claws grabbed her. And she emailed me two or three weeks later and said the eczema's gone. After that experience, it's just something happened that was coming through from a past life. And it's just cleared it. And it's like I took somebody through who had migraines and... I heard from them a couple of weeks later, and they said they've had nothing for two weeks, which was really unusual for them. And that it's some kind of energy that turns up and goes through it and comes through into this, which is what we do in past life regression is looking for clearing the negative energy and breaking the bond to the past life. And we've got techniques to do those things and 
also when we meet the spirit guide, we can ask them to give some healing, which they'll always do if we ask. That's it. That's if they show up. I think sometimes they won't show up because they feel it's not the best thing for you right now. It's like they'll show you stuff in past lives. I've had people say, well, I'm the family and we're going to have dinner. And I say, well, what did you see of your wife in that past life? And they say, not really seeing her. I know she's there. And I feel like the spirit guides are thinking, well, but what we're doing right now, she's not important. So we're not going to show her to you because you don't need to see her. We're just going to show you what you need to see, what will be really helpful for you right now. Well, Simon, thank you so much for sharing from your experiences. Would you like to share with the guests where they can find you? Yeah, my website is pastlifeshypnosis.co.uk and that's got a booking page on it. And if people want to talk to me, they can book a uh, call. I do a 20-minute consultation call free of charge. If they're thinking of doing past life regression, they can book a call with me. My podcast is called Our Paranormal Afterlife. And I also have another podcast called The Alien UFO Podcast. So there's over 300 episodes of one of them, 100 episodes of a UFO podcast. And yeah, that's it. Wonderful. I'll have those links in the show notes. Thank you so much for joining me, Simon. Yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Thanks a lot. Me too. Thank you for watching and listening. Your views, likes, comments, and shares truly make the biggest difference in supporting this channel. Don't forget to check the show notes for all the links to today's guests, as well as my links. You'll find me on social media at Love Cover Life, my website, lovecoveredlife.com, and the Be A Guest link for anybody who would like to be a guest on the channel. I have great news. Love Cover Life podcast is coming available on audio podcast. You can find it wherever you listen to your audio podcasts. Oh.